Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Peter Clausey. He's the CEO for CBLT Inc. and we also refer to him as the Cobalt King here at Investor Intel. Peter, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So Peter, for all, everybody out there at Investor Intel, we're going to be discussing the next big thing at the Clean Tech and Technology Metal Summit and we all believe Cobalt is one of the number one candidates because of how the prices move. So let's just start there. How's the price move for Cobalt? In the summer of 2016, we called for the price of cobalt to clear $20 a pound US on the London Metals Exchange. It shattered that barrier, currently trading around $25 a pound. Cobalt has been the best performing metal on the LME. Of course, one of the reasons the prices have increased is an increased awareness of cobalt, and it's a conflict mineral. Can you give us a bit of an overview? Yes, it's not officially a conflict mineral, but it does fall in that general vague category. 60% of the world's cobalt comes from the Congo, which has been suffering through a horrific war since the late 1990s. It's called Africa's War, and over 6 million people have died there, with the resulting geopolitical uh, corruption and, and disruption of supply chain. As a result, we have seen cobalt production fall out of the Congo. And of course, everyone that's holding a smartphone, anyone that's driving an electric vehicle, they need to have cobalt. Can you tell us the uses of cobalt? Give us kind of a general introduction. There's two groups of use for cobalt. One is the boring old industrial use of about 50,000 tons a year. That's paint, pigments, nuclear, um, medical treatments. But the exploding portion is in the electric battery segment. Your cell phone by weight ha has a battery. And by weight, 60% of it is cobalt. The average electric vehicle has roughly 20 kilograms of cobalt in the batteries. And that is where demand is skyrocketing at a time when production is falling. Can you tell us where we find cobalt? 60% of it is a trace byproduct out of the Congo. You can't mine only the cobalt. You have to process the copper and then as an afterthought get the cobalt. For the longest time in mining, cobalt was a throwaway. Now that it's at $25 a pound and has these industrial and electrical uses, it's in much greater demand. The other large source of cobalt is out of the Philippines. Unfortunately, some mines have been shut in there uh, due to environmental reasons, so we're losing cobalt supply from those nickel mines in the Philippines. The other main source is northern Ontario, the cobalt silver camp from Gauganda down to south of the town of Cobalt. It's my understanding, I mean, if you can find it with copper or nickel, we should have cobalt everywhere. Is that correct? Sadly, no. One would like to think so, but it is a trace metal. It is um, largely found with the copper and the nickel uh, as a trace byproduct, and rarely as a main deposit. I don't know of any mine in the world that is a cobalt mine on its own. It always appears with other metals. And what about the extraction technology processes? Is there anything tricky or extremely cost costly about extracting the cobalt from the copper, for instance? Not especially. It's fairly easy chemistry for the people who know this sort of thing. They've been doing it for many, many years. It's not strange like lithium or beryllium or iridium or one of the strange rare earths. Um, you and I could probably figure out how to process cobalt over an afternoon's worth of mapping. It, it, it's, it, it gets processed with the gold and the silver and the nickel and the copper, and it's a very tried and true technique. And of course, you're going to be speaking at the Clean Tech and Technology Metal Summit May 15th and 16th, specifically on cobalt and the global supply. Is that correct? Absolutely. And Christopher Ecclestone will be addressing the next big thing at this event. We suspect and we understand that he likes cobalt as well. Do you believe this will be his number one candidate or what do you think he's going to select? Well, I don't think any of us can predict, predict what Mr. Ecclestone's going to do. But he has written some interesting articles about um, the shortage of cobalt. He has made a list of failed cobalt projects around the world where there wasn't enough thought put into them. And he's tracked uh, the lack of a supply chain of producing cobalt deposits. So I would suspect it would be on his list. Well, Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.